Hello, my name is Aaron Fields, and this video is for INFA 725 Advanced Network Hacking with Dr. Inga Britson at Dakota State University. Um, it's over chapter 14 in the book Metasploit, the Penetration Tester's Guide. So we're going to be covering uh, fuzzing using Metasploit as well as exploitation using Metasploit. Um, so the software that we're attacking is the Surge Mail email server. Um, so you'll need a copy of that. I'll post some details in the description um, of the video. And you will also need Surge Mail installed in a Windows XP VM along with Immunity Debugger. And you'll also need Metasploit or and slash or Backtrack. We'll begin by fuzzing the application with um, a random string of uh, up to 1024 just random characters. Um, so this code is a uh, auxiliary module written for Metasploit using code out of the book. Um, basically what it does is generates a random string, uh, requests or sends a list request to the server um, with the string um, at the end and then uh, yeah sends a request and returns the result to the user. Um, so you'll want to attach to the mail server using immunity so that um, if the server crashes, you can see what happened. So I think I've got this ready to go here. Yep. So just type run after you've configured the auxiliary module. And it'll churn for a little bit, um, but eventually the server should crash. So we'll just be patient. All right, and it finally crashed. Um, so there's nothing like glaring or obvious um, about this crash. Um, I mean, really, like our input showed up on the stack, though, which is cool. So it turns out that in um, 2008, somebody actually discovered a vulnerability uh, in this program. If you send an overly long list request, um, Surge Mail does not handle it correctly. And so um, our input, which is on the stack right here, can actually extend down much further onto the stack. And so if you send something long enough, you can actually overwrite um, the structured exception handling uh, mechanism. So it's not been overwritten right now. But what we're going to do is create a different fuzzer um, to overwrite it and then um, give us some knowledge as far as uh, like what the offset is of the SE handler pointer. So here we have an updated fuzzer module. Um, basically, the fuzzed string that it's sending is now 11,000 characters long, and it's made up of a string with no um, no repeating patterns. Um, so you'll see why that's important in just a second. So I've got this one loaded up and configured, and we will run it. And our program crashes. It's good. Now you'll notice this value right here, 684E3368. Um, so we'll follow that in the stack, and that is our structured exception handler. Um, so we can take that value um, and bring it back over here to um, backtrack. I actually already ran the command, but there's a tool called pattern offset um, that's included with Metasploit. So you can feed that value back into um, this tool as along with the length of the string that you sent and it'll give you the offset of that value. So our structured exception handler pointer is at an offset of 10,360. So that's cool. Now we know where it's at um, so we can take advantage of it. So ideally what we'd like to do is um, feed the program a payload that looks something like this. Um, so the SDH handler points to code that is to be run upon an exception, right? So what we can do is find a pointer to a sequence of pop pop ret instructions. And what that'll do is um, bring us back a few instructions on this or a few spots on the stack um, to where 
we would have a short jump. Um, this short jump would jump us back a few more instructions um, to a near jump, which would then um, jump us way back on the stack up to a NOP slide, which would then slide down into our shell code. So the first thing that we're going to do to start building this is find a pointer to a pop pop ret. And that's really easy to do, especially since we have um, the search mail executable. So all you need to do is drop that into your backtrack mas machine and then scan it with msfpe scan using the dash p uh, flag. So this will dump all of the pop pop rets that it finds in the executable. Um, and we're just going to use this last address here. Um, so you take this address you know, flip it, a uh, little Indian ordering, um, and put it into this ret variable. And also notice that uh, we're not including the uh, null byte, and we're not including it because if we did, it could be construed as the end of a string, um, and so we're just going to play it safe and not include it. Instead, uh, we're going to use this little dealio right here to um, have Metasploit do some magic. It'll pack um, it'll pack this variable with uh, the 0, 0 in the front when it sends it to the program or to the uh, mail server. So we've got our NOP slide, which is lead. Um, notice that the value is 10,351 bytes. Um, we had to bump that down from 10,360, so 9 bytes less, um, because of the near and NSEH, next um, structured, uh, structured exception handler. Um, so that's just to make sure that everything lines up on the stack correctly as it should. Um, and we're also subtracting, you know, the length of the payload. Um, so near is the near jump. Um, it's five bytes long. It'll jump us back to somewhere in our NOP slide. Um, NSEH is our short jump. Um, so this is where the program will start executing after the pop pop ret happens. Um, so we just mash that all together into one big string. Um, NOP slide, shell code, near jump, short jump, and then our pointer to a pop pop ret. So let me uh, restart the server and then we'll shoot this baby off and see what happens. Alright, the server is restarted and I have got our exploit all set up. So we'll shoot it off. And nothing happens. And that is an issue um, with me being too lazy to identify all of the bad characters. Um, I'll actually talk about that a little bit more in just a second after we finally get this to hit. Um. All right, finally got a hit. So let's take a look at our structured exception handling. Follow that in the stack. You'll notice that our 9090 F9EB, that um, little short jump uh, deal, showed up there. Um, so follow this in the disassembler pop pop return. Um, so I've actually set a breakpoint there so I'll just hit F9 and pass the exception to the program and that's where we end up so we'll do a little pop pop and then we'll return so you see our EBF9 there um, our jump short and that will take us to another jump, which will then jump us into our NOP slide. Uh, so we can play the program and I won't actually get a shell because it was in a debugger, but if I hit re-exploit one more time, there is our shell. So that was fun, huh? Alright, so about those bad characters. Um, so according to the book, um, sometimes what happens when you send data to an application is the application will mangle arbitrary bytes of your input when it's reading your input. Um, 
And so what you can do is set this bad chars variable to contain a bunch of characters that you know are bad. So the characters that I've included, I just copied from the book. The book copied these from other people who have taken the time to figure out what um, IMAP commonly mangles, um, what characters IMAP commonly mangles. Um, and so because we had to run this exploit so many times, obviously um, these aren't the only bad characters. Um, so as far as why our exploit finally did work, even though we had to run it so many times, um, that happens because Metasploit um, dynamically generates shellcode each time you run the exploit. And so eventually what happened is we ran it enough times so that just by chance um, the bad characters, which we don't actually know what they are, um, they weren't in the shellcode. And so our exploit ran successfully. Um, and usually, from what I understand, usually what happens when you have bad characters is that the application you're attacking will actually crash. Um, and so we're actually pretty lucky that we're able to that we were able to just re-exploit over and over and over again without having to restart the server every time. Um, so I believe that concludes this video. Um, if you've got any more questions, um, this was really quick, so feel free to. Uh, ask them in the comments. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.